Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. It's often said that the entire spiritual path is one of moving from the personal to the impersonal. The problem is the personal thinks that the impersonal sounds very cold. Let's talk about this. Let's start with the impersonal. Almost every single thing in your life is impersonal. It has no relationship to you other than you are experiencing it. If you are driving down the street, there are hundreds or thousands of cars that are driving by. They have nothing to do with you. You just happen to be in that spot at that moment, and these are events that are happening in the universe. The cars are driving by. That is what's meant by impersonal. It's not related to you. It's whole within itself. It's related to itself. You understand that? That's at least cars that you're experiencing. If you really want to understand impersonal, which I want you to, I want you to think about the planet Saturn. Of what relationship do you have with the planet Saturn? The answer is very simple. None. None. It's been here for billions of years. Have you? No. It goes about its business without you knowing a single thing about it, but it still goes about its business. has gorgeous rings. You didn't make them. You won't destroy them. They, those rings sometimes show up at different angles. If you look through a telescope, sometimes you're looking right at them, sometimes you're sideways. has nothing to do with you, does it? It is completely and utterly impersonal. Does everybody understand that? All right? So is every other planet. So is every single star. So is every single galaxy. Okay? In this galaxy in which you live, there are 300 billion stars. What is your relationship to them? None. They have nothing to do with you. You have nothing to do with them. They exist completely independent of you. That's what impersonal means. It is completely independent of you. They go about their business. Where do they get their power? The star is a very powerful thing. Our star is 93 million miles away and it can burn you. Think how big a fire has to be. Let's say there was a big fire down in in Ocala National Forest. You wouldn't even smell the smoke. Not the heat. How about Miami? Miami is 350 miles away. 93 million miles away. And you got to put, you know, number 10 on your face or something. (laughs) Hell it is, all right? You got to put star screen on your face, okay? What is that telling you? Where does it get its power? There are 300 billion of those in your galaxy. They now are estimating that there are two to three trillion galaxies. That's what impersonal means. And planets, they are finding that there are way more planets than they had any idea. They used to think it was rare that a star would have a planet. They now understand that almost all stars have planets. doesn't mean they're with what we call the Goldilocks zone, that they're in a zone where human, human life as we know it could exist. But there are billions and billions of planets in our galaxy. And there's, as far as we can tell now, most stars have planets. Wow. Okay. Now listen to me. There is something going on on every one of those planets, whether it's a dust storm, whether it's the storm on on Jupiter. It doesn't matter. Every single inch of every single place in the universe, there is something going on. What's it got to do with you? (laughs) Okay. That's impersonal. There's nothing wrong with impersonal. There better not be because 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
Now let's talk about that, all right? Now look, that point I made a moment ago, I need you to get that. I know you think that this person's in front of you and he's wearing a shirt that you like or don't like and blah, blah, you know, that all of that has something to do with you. How could it have something to do with you? You weren't looking there a minute ago. It was still there, just like the place on Mars or anything else. Every single thing belongs to the forces that caused it to be, almost none of which are you. And I mean, when I say none, none. I'm just being nice because your mind's saying, I, I tripped over him, so he's sitting a little different. The point is, he was there before you got there, and look at all the forces that made him be what he is. Every one of you, your childhood, your genetics, they have nothing to do with you. There just happen to be moments everywhere in the universe. Every single place in the universe is having a moment. You, meaning your consciousness, your awareness of being, just happens to be in this tiny little spot that's seeing the moment that is coming in through your senses. There is no difference between that moment and every moment that's not coming in through your senses. How egotistical can you be that you think that because this is the one that's coming through my senses, it's different than every other one? No, it's not. There's nothing special about the moment that is coming in through your senses, except it happens to be the moment that's coming in through your senses. It was caused by the same forces that cause everything else in the universe to be, which have nothing to do with you. It all started with after the Big Bang with those hydrogen atoms, uh, gases, just floating around in the middle of nowhere across the universe, and then the fundamental forces pulling them together and creating everything you see. It all got made the same way. It all got made the same time. It all has nothing to do with you. You weren't even close to here. That was 13.8 billion years ago. Every single moment that is in front of you took 13.8 billion years to get there. And not just did it take 13 billion years to get there, Every single event for 13.8 billion years had to happen the way it did for that moment to be in front of you. If your great-great-great-grandmother didn't meet your great-great-great-grandfather, you ain't here. And the reason they met, I told you why they met, because I know them. The reason, <laughs> the reason they met is because it was raining that day over in you know, Yugoslavia or wherever they came from. And, and it was raining and she slipped in this old mining town and she slipped and he happened to be standing behind her and he caught her and it was love at first sight. If it hadn't rained, if he wasn't there, whoa, every single thing had to be exactly the way it was for 13.8 billion years for the moment in front of you to be the way it is. Now, what has that got to do with you? How about nothing? How can that be personal? It's not personal. Nothing is personal. I'm going to be tough with you today. Nothing is personal. It just is. It is what it is because of all the forces in creation that made it be the way it is, and it is connected to every other moment at the same time and in the past, and it will create the future, and you're not doing any of it. You are an objective observer that happens to be there where you have senses, and because you have senses, this reality of creation that happens to be in front of you, even though it's everywhere else, is coming in through your senses, and you, the consciousness, are experiencing that moment. Good! What a gift! Isn't that beautiful? You get to experience what took 13.8 billion years to show up. You want to feel special? I'll show you why I feel special. Not because it's personal, but do you understand that every moment you experience that took 13.8 billion years to get there, you are the only one experiencing it. No one is looking at me from the same angle. Every single moment you have ever experienced in your life, you are the only one that ever experienced and no one ever will. No one was standing where you were standing. And that's even for a given moment. Then, of course, your next moment is going to be totally different than the moment that somebody was standing next to you, at least, right? Therefore, the series and sequence of experiences that you've had in your life, every second, every nanosecond, is unique for you alone. Whoa. There, you're special. You don't have to not be special, okay? But that's impersonal special. That's a reality. You do understand no one will ever experience what you experienced. It will never happen again. Isn't that beautiful? It's amazing. It's truth is so powerful. So the Bible means this is, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This should set you free. What are your problems? How come you don't have problems with the parts that aren't in front of you? Because there are lots of them. 99.99999% of the universe is not in front of you, is it? You don't have any problem with it, do you? You worry about the storm on Jupiter very often? No. You worry about what's going on in China in a household you never met or did anything? No. No. 
you have gotten caught in the ultimate trap and we need to get out. Okay, what is personal? Now that you understand impersonal, what's impersonal? Everything. <laughs> right, truth, everything. What's personal? I'm in here. Oh, I forgot to ask. Are you in there? <laughs> Hi. You sure? Okay, okay. That you know. You're in there. Very good. Because you're in there and you're conscious, you are a conscious being, you're aware of being aware of being aware, all right? The world comes in through your senses and makes an impression in your mind and you experience it. Very good. Fine. So then what's supposed to happen is called be here now is it comes in, you experience it, it becomes part of you because you experienced it, it became part of you, didn't it? You don't have to do anything. What do I have to do to experience what I'm experiencing? Nothing. (laughs) Absolutely nothing. You are the experiencer. That's what you are, the experiencer. And you experience what? You're not going to experience what you don't experience. You experience what you experience and it becomes part of you because you experienced it you become greater. You in there. Hi. If you have never seen a snake, you are not as great as a person that saw a snake. If, if you're the first time you see a snake, there's, there's orientation. There's a, the second, the third, the fourth, you're, you're a veteran. You're a veteran of snake seeing. And that goes for everything. The first time you have a relationship and your heart hurts because somebody said something you didn't expect. Can you handle that? Well, if it's the first time and you're not used to the experience or anything like that, it's difficult. But when you understand and you have experienced it and you realize it comes and it goes and it can deepen a relationship, you can understand more. It can make you, it made you a greater being. If your heart never hurt, you haven't experienced anything. If you've gone through experiences where somebody died, you felt a deep sense of loss and you got over that, you went through that and you experienced that, you came out a greater person. Every single experience you have makes you greater. It can't make you less. If I add one to a number, it gets greater. If I add an experience to you, you become greater. That is what is meant to be. That is impersonal. It's not personal. I didn't take it personal. I just experienced it. And because I experienced it, I am a greater being. Now what's going to happen? I will have my next experience. How do you know? Ha, ha, ha. (laughs) You're an experience-having machine. That's what you are. You have senses and the world in front of you is constantly changing and you're going to have the experience that's in front of you. All right. And it comes in and you become greater because of that. Well, what about the experience I don't have? I'm sorry. You're not going to have all the experiences. You better at least have the ones you're having. There are only a certain number of experiences you're going to have. You'll only be alive for a certain period of time and awake at a certain period of time and you're going to have those experiences. Instead of accepting and honoring and respecting that these experiences are manifesting in front of you and took 13.8 billion years to get there, every one of them, you understand that? And you come in and you imbibe them and you learn from them and you make them part of you. What happens is as follows. The consciousness, the awareness that should be being fed and growing and expanding because of the experiences starts to differentiate between the experiences. And that is the beginning of all trouble that ever existed. That is the fall from the garden. And someday you will understand that. And that tree that you weren't supposed to eat from, of self-knowledge, of good and evil, is the beginning of what we call duality, is when you separated what you like from what you don't like. That's what self-knowledge means. It doesn't mean knowledge is bad. It doesn't mean self-knowledge, enlightenment is bad. It means that you decided to make it be about you. You decided to sit there and say, it is not true that all experiences are equal. It is not true that I am honored to have the experiences that are being given to me as a gift by the creation of the universe. You are being given a gift every moment that took 13.8 billion years to get there. But guess what? You're not okay with that. What's that all about? That doesn't even make sense. You are the experiencer experiencing the experience of the reality unfolding in front of you. What happens is it comes in and I am not going to deny. I'm the first one to honor and accept that some experiences when they come in are more pleasant than other experiences. A rattlesnake coiled up in front of you versus a monarch butterfly landing on your arm are very different experiences. You didn't do that. You didn't make them seem like different experiences. They are different experiences. In the Buddhist tradition, they say everything has its nature. 
Well, a rattlesnake rattling and coiled around you has its nature. It is dangerous. It is scary. It is meant to be dangerous, and it is meant to scare you. That's why it's doing it. A beautiful butterfly flying by and landing on your arm is a beautiful, a heart-opening experience. It has a totally different vibration. Its nature is completely different than that rattlesnake. When it comes in, you can be the knower of the rattlesnake. You can be the knower of the of the monarch butterfly. If the only thing you ever experience is monarch butterflies, I don't want to go hiking with you. And if the only thing you ever experience is is rattlesnakes, I'm sure I won't be hiking with you because you won't go hiking. (laughs) All right? You won't want to go. There's a place where the monarch butterflies are hiding. Are there rattlesnakes? I'm not going. That's what yin and yang mean, right? You have experienced the opposite. You have experienced the entire alpha to omega, the different vibrations of creation. Weather has different vibrations, doesn't it? Everything has different vibrations. Good. You get to have experiences. So they come in, you experience them, and you become greater. Then the next thing happens. But that's not what happens. What happens is you in there who experience a vibration that is not nice, You're not evolved enough. That's really the evolution of the soul is what we're talking about. The evolution of you in there. Can you handle a rattlesnake? No, no. Can you handle flying on an airplane after you heard about a crash? No, no, no. Ooh, wow. All right, airplanes are way safer than cars. Your mind's lying to you. But yet you're not evolved enough yet to be able to handle the experience. That is literally what's meant by the evolution of the soul. Are you so young, so closed that certain experiences freak you out and so you're not willing to experience them? Are you so ignorant that certain experiences turn you on and you go after them and you run and you grab them because you think they're going to last? I'm talking deep to you now, all right? Because everything comes and goes, doesn't it? I'm asking you. The Buddhists say it's all transient. Isn't it? Every single thing comes and goes. There is not a single thing that was in front of you a moment ago that's in front of you now. Atoms change, electrons change, quarks, leptons, and bosons popping out of the quantum field are different totally, right? There's not a single thing ever that's the same from one moment to the next. Do you see, see the people change? Do you understand that every single person changes every moment because they had another experience? Is it true that you're in a relationship with somebody and all of a sudden they have an experience and they, they're a different person. They can be um, totally different. They come home different. They would love you in the morning and then they had a bad day and they come home grouchy. Because you are learning and imbibing these experiences, everything changes. So the question is, I get ahead of myself, you in there, you, Atman, soul, essence, being, can you experience the experience you're experiencing? And you better say no. Because you can't. There are lots of experiences that you weren't able to experience. You mean I wasn't able? My senses didn't work? Oh, your senses work just fine. You wish they didn't. You understand that? So let's do that one. So they come in, and the vibration that they carry manifests inside of you. Not just the visualization, also the rattlesnake fear, the vibration, right? And you don't want to have that experience. I don't know what to explain to you. There is free will. You have free will. You mean I have free will, I can get rid of rattlesnakes? No. I have free will so I won't ever see a rattlesnake? No. That's not what free will means. I have free will so I can resist the experience of the rattlesnake? That actually happened? Oh, yeah. You got that one, don't you? You got that one down. Once it comes inside and it manifests inside of you and creates its vibration in your mind, you can choose to push it away. Can't you? Don't you push it away. You have hands in there, don't you? You got arms in there. You touch stuff, all right? You can push emotions away. You can push thoughts away. If you push them far enough away, Sigmund wrote a book about it, right? Repression and suppression. That's pushing it so far away. How about denial? It's psychology. Because you're present, first of all, you're conscious, and you have will, and you resist negative vibrations, tough vibrations, disturbing vibrations, you push them away. When you push them away, they don't finish. I want to cry. If you've never understood anything, please understand that. They don't finish. They didn't make it through you. Well, where are they? They're stuck in front of you. They're stuck inside of you. If a river is flowing by you, a stream is flowing by you, 
and you can't handle it. I don't want it. I don't like the water. So you dam it up. You can own that forever. It will go dry downstream. That's your responsibility. It's your karma, right? It will flood upstream. You now have to maintain where you touched it. You touch it, you own it by definition. If you push away that vibration that came into you, it stays inside of you. How do we know that? Does it ever come back up? Stuff you pushed away? Of course, this is classical psychology. All right, why does it come back up? For the same reason that the stream wants to keep flowing and you better maintain that dam or eventually anything will be there, is it? Because the natural forces will push it away. The natural way of things, this is the Tao. That's what's meant by the way. The natural way of things is that events unfold in accordance to the laws of creation, don't they? <laughs> All right, everything that ever was cause what is. You happen to be present, conscious in a given moment. It's going to come in. The natural way of things is it comes in, it pours into you like the stream pours into the ocean. Now there's no dam. You can't even find the difference in the water anymore, can you? Find the water that went into the ocean that came from the Mississippi. Not a chance. Same thing. The experiences come in and they pour into you. They are no longer good or bad or this or that. They're one with you. In the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, he says, when experiencer and experience become one. It's not mystical. You have plenty of experiences just pour into you and they become part of you. Yes, I know about white lines. There are lots of them. They, they, some are dotted and some are solid. I, I'm not traumatic about them. They're just something that I know about. I know about weather. I know a lot of things, don't I? I'm a knower of things. I know not to touch stoves. I have to learn. I mean, I have to study. I touched one once and that's it. I'm a knower. Doesn't mean I don't own stoves. Doesn't mean I have posters. Don't buy stoves. They burn. You, you become a greater being because you had these experiences. All right? You don't become a greater being when you resist the experiences. You become way less than a greater being. You become a disturbed being. Why? All you have to do is touch one of them and your life is over. One. Just the snake, the storm, the car accident. Just touch one of them and watch what happens. All right? I saw a snake. It scared me. Went there. I suppressed it. I wasn't willing to experience it. I pushed it away. Do you understand that I have to keep pushing that away for the rest of my life? Otherwise, it's coming back up. I'll dream about it, right? I'll see a rope. It'll remind me of a snake. All of a sudden, I have snake consciousness. It is exactly the same as putting sunglasses on. Everything gets dark, not just the sun. Put on purple glasses. Everything gets purple. Put snake inside of you. Everything snake. I don't want to go hiking. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take a chance. I'm not, I'll, I'll go to the zoo with you, but I won't go to the reptile exhibit. No, I'm not going in. So all of a sudden, one thing, just one of those determines your life. Oh, I love you. You're wonderful. I want to marry you. Well, I have a snake. I have a pet snake. No, you're crazy. Oh, get away from me. Are you crazy? And don't think I'm exaggerating. It will run your life. Because you've held this inside of you, it has tinged your ability to see properly. Because you are looking through your psyche, and that's what your psyche is, the things you stored inside of you. That's what they are. That's why yours is different than his. That's your personality. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's okay, but he's got to think about snakes. It will determine everything. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I'm telling you, it runs your life. One of them runs your life. You go toward, which lets you avoid it, right? If, if I know they're not going to be snakes, I like, I like being inside. And also, I like the entire front lawn is concrete. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, it will determine every single thing you do. That's one of them. How many have you touched in your lifetime? How many things have come in that were naturally unfolding in front of you? They were the gift that was given to you. No one else was going to experience it, only you. And you weren't experiencing the 119 billion things that were going on. You see how special that moment is? It's you are having a moment. That's what you're having with every moment. You're having a moment, okay? It's coming in, and you couldn't handle it. And so you push it away. And when you push it away, it gets stored inside of you. And it becomes what we call a soft spot, a trigger point. You see a poster. You hear the word snake, right? You call a plumber. He says, I got to get my snake. Ah! <laughs> you laugh, but I'm not kidding. 
You were married once. It was a terrible marriage. You got divorced in two years. His name was Ben. I'm telling you, 10 years later, you're spying your own business someplace where you've never been before. And say, oh, Ben, come over here. You freak. Or at least your heart starts going like that. Gee, isn't that fun? No. Okay. That's, I'm building the personal. There's nothing personal about the fact that someone called out someone's name in a place you've never been before. 20 years later. Personal to you, isn't it? All right, now you understand personal. Personal means I couldn't handle the reality that was unfolding in front of me, the gift, the moment. So I pushed it away. When I pushed it away, it wasn't able to finish. It wasn't able to make it through me. The water wasn't able to pour into the ocean. You're the ocean. The experience is the stream, all right? It's coming to give you a gift. I wasn't able to let that happen. I pushed it away. When I push it away, it stays inside of me. When it stays inside of me, I must expend personal will for the rest of my life to keep it at bay, all right? And events outside start to, that's what a raw shot test is, you know, in psychology. They hold up ink blots. They want to know what the hell you got in there. All of a sudden, it looks like mommy fighting with daddy. What does that one look like? Mommy leaving daddy. What does that one look like? Daddy leaving mommy. Okay, we got ourselves a little problem here. <laughs> and at what age did your parents get divorced? <laughs> you understand that, right? There's just a mirror of the garbage you collected inside of you. Because that ink blot ain't got nothing to do with mommy and daddy. It's an ink blot. But because this Rorschach tests are very important for you to understand as a spiritual person. Why? Because the whole world is a Rorschach test to you. All you see is what's inside of you. That's what they mean when they say the world in front of you is a mirror of what's going on inside of you. Because you got this stuff inside of you that you stored because you couldn't handle it. And now events come in now and you can't experience them. Why? Because they hit your stuff first. And when they hit your stuff, it either attracts you to them because it was good stuff you stored or or repulses you against them. It was bad stuff. And that's what we call a reaction. You have a reaction to what's coming in, not an experience. Do you see the difference? The experience is be here now. The experience is it comes all the way in with no resistance no clinging and no resistance. It just comes in, whew, and then the next one, and you're ready. You just, oh my God, it's so beautiful, right? You're just an experiencing machine that is becoming greater and greater and greater and greater every moment of your life. But what about when I get old? Have those experiences, right? You are to imbibe and embrace and respect and honor every single experience of every stage of your life. Are you telling me that experience, a moment in front of you when you're 20 is different than a moment in front of you when you're 80? There's no difference. None. Period. Every single experience is for your benefit, is for your growth, is making you a greater being. So basically, you get to the point where you understand personal is because I resisted things. I stored inside of me past experiences that weren't any different than any other experience, but somehow I couldn't handle it. You understand that? I couldn't handle it. Talk about negative ones. Same thing with positive. Oh, he looked at me. Oh, my God. I, I never felt so much love in my whole life. I hope he keeps looking at me. I want him to keep looking at me. Oh, my God. He's looking at her. No, I want him to look at me. All right? He says he'll be back in three hours. What will I do for three hours? I don't want to do it for three hours. I want him to be here now. I want him to look at me now. I'll wait for three hours. What is that? For three hours, you're going to have totally different experiences. No, you won't. Because I only have eyes for you. No. It's like every experience is a gift from God. Every experience creation is giving you a gift so you can become a greater being. But because you like this one, I like the butterfly. Can we go next weekend? I want to live here. Let's build a house. No, you have to work. No, let's live where the butterflies are. So what you're doing is if something comes in and it's not a nice vibration, you hold it suppress it. You hold it at bay because you don't want to touch you. If something comes in and it is a really nice vibration, you cling to it. That's what the Buddhists call it, clinging. You cling to it because you don't want it to go away. In both cases, you kept them inside of you and they are distorting your ability to experience now. If you had a beautiful relationship when you're 12, now when you're 32, You're dating somebody and you're looking to see, oh, he doesn't slurp his soup the same as Johnny did. You're literally comparing the experience that comes in with the ones you liked or didn't like. So you're not having the experience. You're having your old experience. When the third Zen patriarch, one of the deepest Zen writings, says to end the burdensome practice of judging, 
That's what they're talking about. You know, judging requires a standard you're judging against, doesn't it? You have to have multiple things to judge. You judge one against another. What are you judging against? The past garbage you stored inside of you. The past experience that you either liked or didn't like. Now the new experiences come in, but they don't make it in. They make it into your mind, and then you judge them. You look at them. Do I like this? Do I not like this? Do I want this? Do I not want this? Should I go this way or shouldn't I go this way? All based on what? Those past experiences you stored. What else? That's the only thing in there. Now you understand the personal. Right? It's hard to see because we are 100% caught in it. And that is the folly of humanity. And that is why you can't know truth. Because you're not even trying to know truth. You're trying to recreate the situations that you liked before and trying to avoid the situations that you didn't like before. And now you're out there trying to manipulate the world unfolding in front of you to match your stuff. You are trying to manipulate every moment in front of you so it doesn't hit the stuff that you stored that you didn't like. And so it does hit the stuff that brings back up what you did like. And now what's hilarious when you have to look at it is good luck. Why? You admitted to me that the world has nothing to do with you. It's the result of 13.8 billion years of creation, creating, right? And the force in front of you is the result of all the forces that made it be what it is. And you're now going to make your life be about making it be you. (laughs) Having fun yet? No, no. That is why Buddha said all of life is suffering. That's the first noble truth of Buddha. He wasn't being negative, but his first noble truth, all of life is suffering. Because if you're going to do that, all of life is suffering. If you get what you want, you're going to be afraid of losing it. If you go out there and dress pretty and do nice things and win somebody's attraction, I'm waiting to see how tight you are, figure out what to wear next time. Because you think you did it. Personal means personal. I am the doer. This is my universe. I'm in charge of making sure what happens. I have to make it be the way I want and not be what I don't want. And everybody's out there fighting with everything to try and try and make it match the garbage that they stored inside themselves instead of this beautiful impersonal life. Notice it doesn't sound so cold anymore, does it? This beautiful impersonal life of enjoying the rain and enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the heat and enjoying the cold and enjoying every single moment and every single person and every single experience. Whoa, how about I want you to have that? I want you to wake up in the morning and go, wow, I wonder what will happen today. I'm going to get to have some experiences. Don't worry, you'll have experiences. You just won't have the ones you want. But you're going to have experiences. You do know that, don't you? That's what you're afraid of. You're afraid because you stored this garbage inside of you. And now you have all this fear inside of you. How can you not be afraid? How many experiences have you had in your life that weren't so comfortable to you? Plenty. There, there's stuff comes in. You stored those, didn't you? So now you didn't store the white lines. You didn't store the experiences that were neutral. You didn't store the cars driving by. You didn't store the trees going by. You just picked out the experiences that weren't comfortable to you. Fair enough. And you stored those. Well, therefore, you stored the garbage. You stored every single thing that ever bothered you inside your heart. And now when the world comes in, it stimulates that. Why? Because that's what's there. And the next thing you know, you're feeling anxiety or fear or insecurity or self-consciousness or embarrassment or guilt Have you ever felt guilt about something you did 20 years ago? Or if you're young, 10 years ago. And you better shake your head yes. You're not even doing it anymore. And you feel guilt. Why? Because it's still in there. It's absolutely unbelievable what we've done. And no one's paying attention. And what they think the solution is, is to manipulate the world so it doesn't hit the stuff. So we only have a nice thing. Always talk the way I want you to and wear what I want you to and don't do that. I told you not to do that. Hear me? And so the only way you're going to be okay if you play this personal game is you get every single moment for the rest of your life to unfold the way you want. (laughs) How's that working out so far? Okay. That's where tension comes from. That's where stress comes from. That's where anxiety comes from. Of course it does. If I got this garbage inside of me and I'm afraid of it, and I am, that's why I stored it down there. If I couldn't handle it when it happened, I can't handle it now. I didn't learn anything. So it's still stored in there. I'm afraid it's going to come back up. Well, so I feel this tremendous tension. You're going to give a, a speech in class tomorrow. How you feel? <laughs> you should have fun. I get to stand there and see what's going to happen. It'll be fun. Well, what if I don't do good? Fine, I'll learn. So what? Who cares? I mean, how many experiences are going at the same time you're giving that talk? That's hilarious. 
right? 800 billion zillion experiences are going on and you have one, have fun with it. You can't because you store all this garbage inside of you and so it comes back, even the thought of it brings it back up, doesn't it? You're not even there talking the day before, a week before, two months before, you're freaking out. You have to write something. I love it. You've got writer's block. What in the world is writer's block? Writer's block is a very, very straightforward thing. I have something very creative inside of me. All of you have something very, very creative inside of you. Very creative. Called you. You back there, the consciousness, is very creative. I have all the psychological mumbo-jumbo of everything that ever happened in my life where people laughed at me, where I didn't do well, where I got a D and I thought I was supposed to take an A, blah, blah, blah. I store all this garbage and now I'm going to sit there and write. No, really what I'm going to sit there and do is, is risk. Risk that I'm going to write something down that someone's going to laugh at. They're going to write something down that doesn't get an A. They're going to write something down that doesn't go on the New York Times bestseller list. They're going to write, come on, come on, come on. And that's, I'm, I'm risking that the world I create out there that I interact with is going to come in here and screw me up. It doesn't sound like much fun. There should be none of that. And I mean none. You do not have to live that life. That is the personal life. You take everything personal. Watch what happens when somebody's talking to you. Watch what goes on inside of you. They start talking this way, you start feeling a little bit better. Talk this way, you feel a little bit anxious. Just watch your mind while somebody's talking to you. You're not listening to them. You're listening to what you have to say about what they're saying. You're listening to what your reaction is to what they're saying. If you're even interested. Otherwise, you think about what you're going to say when they finally shut up. And that's embarrassing. I've caught him doing that plenty of times. (laughs) All right? I'm trying to paint a picture for you of the personal life versus the impersonal life. One is wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful, liberating, free, growthful. The other is disgusting. You are scared every moment. You wake up in the morning. You're afraid of what you did yesterday. Well, oh my God, I said that. Will somebody find out? You're afraid of what will happen today. Will it be what you want? So, and and well, what, you say, what about the positive things? Yes, there are some positive things that have happened to you in life. Of course, there's yin and yang, things that have come in. You stored a few things. And the moment you store them, they might as well have been negative. Why? You went to Hawaii. It just happened to happen. You won a tick. You won a surprise. One of those robocalls turned out to be right. You have won. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a trip to Hawaii, and you went there, and it was just perfect. The weather was gorgeous. Everything was wonderful. The hotel was great. Everyone was nice to you, right? You, you travel with wonderful people. Great, okay? I am so sorry the next time you go on vacation for you, you know, because you don't stand a chance. <laughs> And you know it, because you're going to compare everything. The hotel was much nicer last time. Hawaii's temperature was a lot nicer than Alaska. Yeah, well, that, well, Alaska, you know, it's supposed to be at the glacier. We were looking for a warm temperature. And so basically, you're going to be comparing everything. Oh, won't you? Come on. Oh, lay this on. You will compare everything against that positive experience. Fall into a relationship. You have this thing, Albert used to go to the honeymoon phase, isn't it, right? You fall in a relationship and you're getting along really well and everything you say to each other is right in tune and you giggle all the time. and It's just the most amazing thing in the world. Then you, you expect that. Well, you're in trouble. If it happens spontaneously, there's something nice about it, right? But all of a sudden you're saying things like, well, before you seemed to be more in tune with me. I, you know I need some space every once in a while. Well, why don't you tell me? I shouldn't have to tell you. Wow. It's like all of a sudden this weirdness starts because you held on to a nice experience, you expect it to happen again, you want it to happen again. You used to hold the door, open the door for me. Well, we have three kids, and our arms are rather full. And I like to when you open, okay. You ruin it. You ruin it by holding on to it. Go to a restaurant. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the experience of the restaurant. Do not go back and bring friends after telling them how good it is. All right? Because it will never, ever be the way you remember it. Okay, they'll be playing different music, somebody's smoking next to you, the special's not the same as it was, a different chef, the waiter wasn't the same guy. Well, it's that's not gonna do it, is it? You never can recreate the beauty that happened that was so beautiful to you because it was spontaneous. That's what made it beautiful. It was spontaneous, you weren't expecting it. If you're expecting something, you judge it. You look for it to be a certain way. Do you understand that? But if it's spontaneous, if it's be here now and it made it all the way in, oh my god, now I can talk to you spontaneous means it made it all the way in because I didn't have any stuff that judged it on its way in. So all of a sudden, I wasn't expecting you to walk up to me and just say, God, you know, I've loved you since kindergarten. I mean, I've just been embarrassed to say, it's like, you are just the most beautiful person I've ever met, right? It's like, whoa, that's nice. That's a nice experience, right? <laughs> I don't want to go for an encore. 
I don't want to see next time we meet because there isn't going to be anything that's spontaneous. It's not going to have the same effect because you're going to judge what happens next against what you experienced there. If you sit there and say, oh my God, Johnny was so nice. What you really mean is what Johnny said to me that time about how much he liked me and since kindergarten, it came in and touched my soul. That's what was nice, not Johnny. Because Johnny ain't doing it again. Because if he walks up to you next time, he says, I've loved you since kindergarten. Right? You're going to go, hey, this is getting old. <laughs> so the spontaneity is not because of the event, but because you don't have anything going about it. Therefore, it comes in and touches you. It's not going to happen again by definition because you're looking for it too. That's why the positive, we call these samskaras, these things you stored inside. That's why the positive samskaras are just as problematic as the negative ones. The negative ones make it so that you're afraid of things. You don't want them to happen and you start to see them outside when they're not even happening. Or you think about them, you get all weird. Well, we know that's a problem. You got plenty of those. But now you clung to the positive ones and so now you can't have a spontaneous experience anymore. All right. That's what the personal looks like. And I've lived with one just like you have. And it it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If it sits there and says, I don't want this to happen, I know I won't want it to happen. If it happens, it's going to hit that thing, it's going to be a bad experience, it's going to come back up, and you say, see, I knew it. All right? So what is the alternative? The alternative is very difficult for people, but it shouldn't be. The alternative is to say, I am a conscious being. That's who I am. I'm in here. I'm conscious. I am the self, the soul, the Atman. That's my being. I'm aware I have made a gross mistake. I have separated what I like from what I dislike, and they are very, very strong inside of me. And I've now done worse. I've devoted my life to getting what I want and avoiding what I don't want. And it's a mess. It's a mess. I've made big messes out there manipulating, controlling people, places, and things, complaining, get I'm a mess, they're a mess. That's the personal. That's the personal. Okay? So basically, you wake up and you realize this is spirituality. You play this game, you lose. There's no winning this game. There's only one way out, and that is the spiritual path. What is that? You didn't have to hold this stuff inside of you. You did it out of free will. In essence, God said, I'm going to create an entire universe that's absolutely unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Billions and billions and trillions of galaxies, and I'm going to make this one planet that has elephants and whales and people of all different sizes and flowers and, you know, oh my God, birds of paradise, flowers are going to grow out of the ground. Oh my God. And fruit, it's the most, it's the Garden of Eden. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to put you on that planet and let you visit down there, right? And you do whatever you want. What do you want to do? I want to be a neurotic mess and be really uptight about everything the entire time I'm there. I want to remake the whole thing. I want every moment in front of me to be the way I decided to be, not the way you made it. I want it to be the way I want it to be. Well, then you're going to suffer. So the answer is, you did not have to store this stuff inside of you. You used your free will to do this. Well, use your free will to let it go. And that is the only way out. There is no such thing as building a life for yourself that works. This should relieve you to say, well, it wasn't that I did it wrong. I defined the goal wrongly. It is not true that if you move out to the country and get your little house and have two and a half kids and there's a dog and a cat and so on that everything's going to be fine. It's not true. Things don't make you be okay. If your inner state has issues stored inside, eventually stuff's going to hit it. People that are happy become sad. People that are doing fine, wealthy, all this. Look, if wealth works so well, then how come people were throwing themselves off buildings in the 20s crash? The most successful, wealthy leaders of our society standing on the 38th floor of Wall Street and throwing themselves off. Well, then money didn't solve it, did it? Because the moment you lost it, there it was. The moment you lost the money, right? If, if you took medication and it healed you, you don't take the medication anymore. You're healed. If money solved your problem, then you don't need money anymore. Because you're whole. You're complete. You're happy. No. It doesn't work. Same thing with relationships. Not that I have anything against them. Don't, doesn't mean you're not going to have money. Doesn't mean you're not going to have relationships. There are natural things in society, natural things in your life. You understand that? But if you think a relationship is going to get rid of that crap you stored inside of you, you got a lot to learn, don't you? Because what's going to happen is eventually that person is going to say something or do something going to hit your stuff. Come on, I want to see your pearly whites, right? Why do you think 50% of all marriages end in divorce? Oh, they were planning on it from the beginning. No, they were not. 
planning on it from the beginning, all right? It is because when stuff is flowing in a way that fits your stuff, you think it's going to stay. It's wonderful. As long as you have stuff, you're in trouble. And you know you got stuff. The only life that is beautiful is when you get that stuff out of there. Can you imagine having none of that stuff in there? There's not anything inside of you that has anxiety or worry or desire. There's no fear and no desire. What is there? Openness, open heart, open mind, imbibing, embracing the experiences that are going to come to you, becoming a greater being every moment of your life. Are some experiences comfortable? Yes. Are some experiences uncomfortable? Yes. You learn from the uncomfortable. You learn from the comfortable. They don't become who you are. You are the one that's experiencing them. If you fall in love, that's beautiful. Love has a lot to teach you. Everything has a lot to teach you. But you are not the person you love and you are not the experience of love. You are the one that's experiencing it. You're the same was in there before the love showed up, aren't you? (laughs) All right? You are the self. You're the Atman. You're the soul. You're the consciousness. You're the awareness of being. And you're going to have these different experiences. Be open. Let them come in. Learn from them. So the right way to live, and it's beautiful, is open, clear. You let go of this stuff. What what do you mean let go of this stuff? You know you got stuff in there. You don't have to. What do you mean I don't have to? You're keeping it in there. When it comes back up, you push it back down, don't you? Right? Somebody says something, gets you upset. I need a minute. Excuse me. You push it down all the time. And when it comes back up, something reminds you what you liked. Oh, my God, I like going sailing. I like doing this. I like climbing the mountain. All right, somebody says something about a mountain. I'll skip school. I'll go say, oh, man, jumps up, right? You're just being reactive. You're just reacting to the garbage you stored inside of you instead of experiencing and imbibing the moment that's being given to you. That's a big difference. So basically, you get to the point where you realize, I have a job. And the job is not trying to make everybody and everything, including the weather, be the way I want and not be the way I don't want. That's not my job. You don't want that job. I'm begging you. Fire yourself. You're fired, all right? You don't want that job. That's a terrible job. It will destroy you. You will never, ever achieve what you're looking for, and you'll never be satisfied in life, period. And you get older, you'll get more dissatisfied because you think, now I'm older, I'll never get it the way I want. Well, you set yourself up to fail, So instead, you sit there and say, I am devoting my life, ooh, by every moment of my life. I used to devote my life to getting what I want and avoiding what I don't want. I'm going to change. It's a paradigm shift. I now devote my life to letting go of this garbage I've stored inside of me and not taking any more in. You mean I have any more experiences? No, not resisting and clinging to experiences. Well, how do I get rid of the stuff that's inside of me? I thought you'd never ask. All right? (laughs) The answer is, it is both the most difficult and the simplest thing that you will ever do in your life. Why is it the most difficult? Because by definition, if you liked it, you wouldn't have pushed it away. And if it was stored with pain, it is coming back up with pain. Do you understand that? And if it was stored with glowy, things Johnny was so sweet at 12, right? It's going to come back with all that glitter and stuff that will distort your ability to see properly. So both of them, those are some scars. When they open up, that's what they do, all right? So that's the difficult part, is to not go with them and do what they say to do, because you do now. Someone comes up, you don't feel good? You're looking forward to going to a party. You got all the thing, you got your clothes, you think, oh my God, I'm looking forward for weeks. You go to the party, and all of a sudden your mind says, Johnny's here, I don't want to see Johnny. I don't want to see Johnny. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And you start feeling this weird vibration. Isn't it weird? It gets weird. And guess what? You actually leave. You actually do what it tells you to do. You do what the personal tells you to do. If it says go for it, you go for it. If it says stay away from it, you stay away from it. OMG. The lowest part of your being, the lie. It says this is the universe. This is not the universe. This is the garbage you collected from the minuscule experiences you had. It's meaningless. And so the difficulty is because they have so power packed, because they are the things you separated out by definition, you have a thing going with them, It's hard not to go with them. Fine. That's the difficulty. It's just like giving up heroin. It's like giving up drugs. You have to go through withdrawal. You give up the personal. It's going to come up. And what do you mean it's going to come up? Don't I have to go down there and fish for it? No. Here's what I said. Here's what I said. It's easy and hard. I told you the hard part is you have to be able to sit there and handle this stuff. Remember, not buy into it, not give it what it wants. Like a kid throwing a tantrum. You wouldn't buy him what he wanted, would you? 
All right, this you got a little kid in there throwing tantrums about what it wants and what it doesn't want, and you've been reinforcing it every second of your life. So how do you know what to get rid of? You don't. It tells you. How do I know? It's in your face. You'll be walking around all day and somebody will say something or somebody won't say something or somebody will say it with a certain sort of an accent to it that you didn't expect or they'll say it a little quieter and you couldn't hear them. Did they do it purposely? True, isn't that what I just said? It's pretty sensitive in there, isn't it? When it comes up, let it go. That's all. That's the only technique I'll give you. I'm sorry. I don't, you should meditate. It'll help you. All these things will help you. I don't teach them, right? When it comes up, let it go. I highly recommend when it comes up, let it go. Sally, Sally. Sally! Oh, God, she didn't say hello. What did I do? I, let it go. Don't I have to figure out what, whether she heard me or not? No. Don't I have to find out why, why she didn't turn back? But there was somebody next to me, and then I, said, I said, she was my friend, and now I feel weird because... I, let it go. Let it go. It's your garbage coming back up. There's 7 billion people on the planet Earth that didn't say hello to you today. And you freaked out over one. You are sitting on a planet spinning around a star and the planet is so tiny in the middle of dark empty space and there's billions of stars and you care whether somebody turns hi George that determined how you felt for the rest of the day there's something wrong with you (laughs) but don't worry you're in good company it's called the human race do you understand now you understand now the personal versus the impersonal you need to let this stuff go you do not want to devote your life to the lowest part of your being. It's so small, right? It's this tiny. It's this big. It's, it's, and, it's, and it's only yours unique. Nobody else got one like yours, right? And so you want, you want to meet somebody who matches you. There's nobody who matches you. There's no way anybody had the same experience that you did or handled them the same way. Don't talk about soulmates. There's not somebody out there that matches you. It can't be because they didn't have the same experiences. And their genetics are different. Everything's different. Enjoy the difference. Enjoy the experiences. Don't try to make it match your garbage. So when things happen and they hit your stuff, relax. Breathe. Relax. Don't breathe to push it back down. Breathe to let go. I teach you. You're in there. Let's say you come to me and say, yeah, but my heart hurts. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. How do you know? How do you know your heart hurts? But when she didn't say hello to me, I just felt so weird. How do you know? You do know, don't you? You who knows are the highest part of your being. You who notices that your heart hurts is not the hurting heart. You're the one who notices. Be the one who notices. Just relax and realize, okay, I'm noticing a hurt heart. Relax and lean away from it. If you will do that, they write me from all over the world. <laughs> I'm reading the Antenna Soul, right? If you will relax and do that, your life will change instantaneously. Not totally clear. It'll take some time, right? But um, it's amazing to see what they write that they just started doing that and everything changes. Of course everything changes. You're giving yourself some space. Let's say you're eating food that makes you sick. I have some advice. Stop eating it. (gasps) It worked. I felt much better. (laughs) Right, okay. Stop devoting your life to that which cannot be satisfied. You are not going to recreate the moments that made you feel good before and you're not going to manage to manipulate life to avoid everything that ever bothered you. That is not what you're supposed to devote your life to. Devote your life to experiencing reality. Devote your life to the honor that the moment in front of you took 13.8 billion years to get there. Let it in. But in order to do so, you have to let go of your reactions. Just keep letting go. Let go. Let go. Don't suppress. Don't deny. Just relax and release. Relax and release. Relax and release. It can't not work. Relax and release and lean back because you're leaning into self. And it turns out, I'm not going to discuss it because we're out of time. I've talked about personal and impersonal. You see the difference, right? I haven't talked about the nature of self. I've talked about the nature of rattlesnake. I've talked about the nature of butterfly. As you get closer to the seat of your being, that's the word I'm going to use, the seat of your being, where you're conscious from. Where are you? When you watch TV, you're on a couch watching. You get sucked in, but you're really still on the couch. Where are you? Where's your inner couch? That's the self. That's the seat of self, where you're watching from. You will, the more you get closer to that, the more you will feel joy, spontaneous love. We call it shakti, spirit. It just starts welling up inside of you. You just feel all this joy and love and beauty and light spontaneously, completely unconditionally. Well, that's not bad. And you realize if I don't leave the seat of self to get involved in the garbage, I will have that every single moment of my life. You just basically let go of your lower self. 
and you will naturally ascend to the deeper part of your being. All of life helps you because it hits your stuff. And if it doesn't hit your stuff, it comes in like the sunset or some beautiful experience. So this is the spiritual life. Has nothing to do with what you read, although reading is important. You put good stuff in there. Has nothing to do with what you believe. Belief is of the mind. You know that's garbage in there. And you know that it makes you do things (laughs) because you're either afraid or desirous, right? They will not take you anywhere. Neither your desires nor your fears. They will just like a boat without a rudder, (laughs) right? They just go running around reacting to what attracted you or repulsed you. Who are you? Not what's attracting you or repulsing you. Who are you? Who are you? Get to know that one. The rest will fall away. And what's left is just a bundle of light, of beauty, of joy, of love that will just shed light everywhere as you go. All right. So that's personal. We got that one down. And impersonal. All right. Jaggerative.